Good evening, guys. I welcome you on behalf of ACCA Global and School Scan School of Accountancy, Islamabad. I hope everybody is doing fine, doing in their best of health. And uh, today we are going to conclude this webinar. This is the last day. I know the WhatsApp group, as promised, has not yet been made, but uh, it will surely be made. Uh, hopefully and uh, i will be available for future correspondence through email and through that number if you guys have any issues so i will be very happy helping you out with them so far this session has been very much interactive and i am very happy that you people were uh, up in asking the questions and getting the concepts that you wanted to clear as clear and uh, I believe that it has added into the knowledge bank of yours. Uh, first of all, we will be completing the question that we started yesterday. Further, we will be moving on to value added tax, some share schemes and other question that I will be uh, working with Excel so that you have a better idea to use the Excel as well and the last 15 20 minutes of the session will again be on those tips that are very crucial for the uh, exam technique so let's start the session if there are any questions you know the drill you are more than welcome in uh, writing the questions in the questions tab i will be very happy to answer them okay guys the question was relating to the interaction of CGT and IHT. There was a guy, Akil, who required advice on capital gain tax and inheritance tax implications of gifting a warehouse to his daughter Damia. He also uh, requires advice on the tax consequences for the company in which he is a director and a shareholder of its disposal and acquisition of certain capital assets. So the first requirement was uh, dealt with. Uh, we we already were done with the first requirement. In respect of the proposed gift of the warehouse on 1st October 2018, guys, uh, it is of very uh, prime importance that we highlight the relevant dates. Somehow, when the examiner says that calculate the tax implications for this particular year and there are certain questions in which the planning of the person is actually uh, not accounting for that particular transaction in that particular tax year. So just leaving that transaction is uh, gaining you the marks. So we cannot ignore the dates. Dates are of very critical importance. We need to know for which tax year we are calculating the, uh, for which cal uh, tax year we are working and which transactions are being impacted in this tax year from a gain that has already be, been made in past or the gain that we are going to make in future. So the thing under question should be of prime importance and everything that has already happened or that is going to happen, if it is going to impact uh, your current scenario, current tax year, you have to consider it wisely and you have to look at the complete picture. So uh, explain why capital gain tax relief will be available in this case we uh, constructed the answer that the warehouse is a business asset which has been used by uh, which has been uh, used throughout akil's period of ownership uh, which is akil's personal trading company he, he is owning more than five percent of the uh, ordinary share capital and the doni damia is a uk resident so these are the all prereqs of the uh, gift reliefs availability that are being met hence we say that the gift relief is available see there are only three to four lines written in complete if i if i combine all these lines i, I am not getting more than four lines it means that for two marks i have written four lines they are written in a very basic simple english so that the expression i want to make is clear to the examiner the basic trick the basic idea here i am again going to emphasize on that when you are writing your question when you are sorry when you are writing your answer you have to prepare it in your mind 
and you have to take a reality check that what have whatever you have planned in your mind is actually in line with the requirement asked by the examiner if it is in line with the examiner then try to write in simple english the simpler the english is the more easy it will be for you to conclude the answer in less amount of words the use of punctuation marks the use of uh, uh, semicolons commas and uh, uh, sentences getting lengthy and lengthy when a sentence gets lengthy it has potential of giving a meaning that was not intended so it actually is not serving the case so you have to be very much sure that you choose the right words and you put them up in plain simple english that's it so what is the second requirement the second requirement says explain with supporting calculation the effect of making a gift relief claim in respect of the warehouse on total cgt liabilities of akil and damia and the marks were five so there are supporting calculations and there is an explanation that is being required by the examiner from your side we have gone through that akil and damia they both are resident and domiciled in the uk both are the high rate taxpayers both make disposals to fully use their annual exempt amount for each tax year now we have to link our requirement with that of the information given above it says explain with supporting calculation the effect of making a gift relief now if we make a gift relief and if there is something if there is something that will be chargeable in this case is not going to be impacting any of my annual exempt amount because it has already been used by the concerned persons so the differential calculation rule says that you don't engage in those things that are already clearly being said by the examiner so annual exempt is annual exempt amount has been fully used it is not going to feature in this calculation because the impact of this has already been guided by the examiner not to be included i hope it makes sense for you guys and let me just see the question okay no questions as yet but the questions are welcome i really want that uh, this this uh, last session uh, uh, gets more fruitful for you guys and all the questions relating to the exam technique and uh, everything else the smaller points throughout the syllabus of p6 adx uk version you are more than welcome to ask i will be there to answer you and what about akil he is a director and 55% shareholder in s limited that is a uk resident and trading company will give a warehouse building to his daughter damia on 1st october 2018 the gift will be made on 1st october 2018 and uh, it says that you have to analyze the impact for this transaction akil's warehouse uh, akil acquired the warehouse on 1st july 2006 the cost was 62000 the warehouse has fully owned by the company and the current market value of the warehouse is 195000 so it is simple calculation to get the answer or get the gain damia will use the warehouse solely now it says that explain with supporting calculation the effect of making gift relief claim in respect of warehouse on cdt liabilities of akil and damia so we are not just limiting ourselves to the impact on damia we are not just limiting our or uh, or discussion for the impact on akil it the requirement says both so the impact on the donor the impact on the donee and the calculations for the donee the calculation will be the base cost thing for the donor the calculation will be the gain that will be deferred so five marks will be divided like that okay damia the intended use is uh, for her sole trader business intends to retain and use the warehouse until she sells the business in five years time so she is going to uh, retain it for five years time and if she retains it for five year times Uh, it majorly satisfies the condition of uh, entrepreneur at least where the warehouse is anticipated to have increased in value as limited prepare we are leaving the question uh, till here 
because I guess the data we have gone through is enough to answer the below requirement worth five marks. Now, let's go to the solution. The effect of making a gift relief claim is that the gain of 133,000. It is a straightforward calculation. 195,000 is the market value at that time. 60,000 was uh, 62,000 was the cost arising on the gift by a key on 1st October 2018, and it will be deferred. Uh, will be deferred and deducted from the base cost of the warehouse for damia Accordingly, the chargeable gain will be reduced to nil. It says that he is gifting it out. It is not mentioned that any consideration is taken. We have discussed it yesterday's session that if the gift is outright, there is no consideration taken. The gain will be fully deferred. Thank you. Guys, give me a minute. Okay, the gain will be deferred in this case since this is an outright gift and the whole of the gain that is equal to 133,000 being deferred. And we made this rule that if the gain is deferred, that particular amount deferred will be deducted from the market value and the base cost will be calculated for the donee. So if the gift relief claim has not been made, Akil's capital gain, it is the explanation, Akil's capital gain of 133,000 would have been liable to CGT at the rate of 20%. Akil has already used his annual exempt amount for tax year 2018. ER relief is not available as Akil will not be selling his shares in uh, S Limited. So the disposal of the warehouse will not qualify as the associated disposal for entrepreneur relief. So the CGT saved by opting for the gift relief will be 26,600. That is the amount of the gain into 20%. I hope this is clear for you guys. If there is any explanation required, you can please write it down in the question box. And uh, if I see the attendees, all those my favorite guys like Ravi, Tommy, Evelyn, Fawad, Jawad, they all have shown. I'm really very, very thankful to all of you guys for bearing with me for these five days and uh, coming every single day and giving your time and energy for me. I am very, very thankful to you guys. I hope these sessions actually add a lot in your uh, exam journey and it proves out to be fruitful so the questions are welcome especially Ravi, Tommy, Pawad, Evelyn okay so it is very simple I will again dissect the requirement for you because this is the art of writing that is going to save you the time and will bring you the mass it has said that supporting calculation is required and the supporting calculation you have seen, there is no lengthy calculation. I have not used any AE, I have not used anything. I have used my brain and I have tried to limit my answer to those points that are pretty much relevant to this. I hope it is very much clear for you. Now, when we come to Damia, when Damia sells her business in five years time, she will realize again on the warehouse, this gain will definitely will be effectively increased by the amount of gift relief due to the reduction in the base cost in respect of the deferred gain 133 was fully deferred so the base cost would have been the market value minus the gain and uh, this would have increased the uh, gain when damia is going to uh, sell the shares However, provided the sales take place within three years of cessation, Damia will just adding that assumption into it that the date of disposal is within three years of date of cessation. Damia will be qualifying for ER relief and she will be disposing of the whole of her business, which she has carried on throughout the year preceding the date of transfer. Therefore, Damia's CGT will increase by 133 into 10%. One, uh, 133 into 10%, that is 13,300. The total tax saved as a result of the claim will be 13,300, 26,600 minus 
13,300. So this is the total scenario without the option 26,600, but making an option, it will be 13,300 and we will be saving the equivalent amount in that respect. So, Ravi, they are written in the handouts. You can go through them, please. Uh, if they are not clear, please let me know. I will be answering you uh, again. Uh, maybe on the voice note, if it is not clear uh, in this session, because we have spent uh, handsome time on that. Maybe you missed out on that part of the session yesterday. But no worries, you can always ask me. I will be guiding you maybe on the WhatsApp, no worries at all, or on the email as well. Okay, so the next, uh, but I would uh, I would rather encourage Tommy, maybe maybe Evelyn, maybe Fawad, if you could write down the uh, qualifying conditions of BADR for Ravi in the question box, I will be very much uh, happy and I will be thankful to you if, uh, if, if you do that effort for me and Ravi. Please keep my words, do do that. Okay. The third one is advice on the availability of the business property relief for inheritance tax purposes if Akil dies before 1st October 2025. So, in this case, the question is focusing on what? It says availability of the BPR for IHT purposes if Akil dies before 1st October 2025. Now we are going to consider the we are not talking about the APR because there was no agricultural property involved here. It was business property. So that is why the business property relief is being concerned. The gift of the warehouse will qualify for the business property relief at the rate of 50% because Akil will have owned it for at least two years prior to the date of the gift and immediately prior to the transfer it will have been used by s limited a company controlled by akil however it is also necessary that damia still owns the warehouse at the date of akil's death remember the withdrawal of bpr we have to check the conditions that were being satisfied at the uh, time of the lifetime transfer and at the time of the death uh, tax on both occasion of charges we have to see for the conditions if they are meeting then uh, bpr remains in place but if it is not being met at the date of death uh, then we simply withdraw that okay accordingly if a kill dies within next five years while damia is still in business business property relief will then be available but the business property relief will only be available after this if Damia reinvests the proceeds from the sale of warehouse in further qualifying asset within the three years of date of sale. It was clearly understood yesterday that if you dispose of and you buy back some other relevant property, maybe in a better form, maybe in an approved in an improved version, so it still qualifies for that. And this is it. This is the availability of the BPR in this case. And now let's go to the requirement of Spider Limited. Spider Limited prepares as accounts for 30th June each year, is owned by Akil 55% and Basir 45%. Basir is not connected to Akil and is neither a director nor an employee of Spider. So anything uh, for Basir relating to employ uh, relating to entrepreneur relief will not be applicable since he is not the director nor an employee. Okay, S Limited, the disposal of equipment. S Limited sold an item of its equipment for proceeds, 20,000 pounds on August 2, 2018. The equipment had been purchased on 1st May 2012 for 65,000. The written down value of uh, the company's main pool was nil at 30th June 2018. Rollover relief was claimed on the purchase of the equipment to defer a chargeable gain of 38,000. This is a very meaningful information. It says that the rollover relief has been already claimed and the amount that uh, amount of the chargeable gain deferred was 38,000 S limited will use the after tax proceeds from the sale of an item of fixed equipment 
to purchase a motorcycle which it will give to Vassar. So the proceeds will be reinvested in something that will be given to Vassar who is not an employee or the director of the company. Again, pretty useful information. Now, in light of this, we go through the requirement and the requirement is worth eight marks. So there might be some calculations. There might be some explanations and uh, so that we could earn these eight marks. Explain with supporting calculations the amount of after tax proceeds which will be available from the sale of fixed equipment and the tax consequences for both S Limited and Vassar of the gift of motorcycle. What, it, what does it say that you have to explain? It means that you have to make a narrative, you have to make a descriptive effort to explain the scenarios and those descriptive efforts will be supported by the calculations. They will not be the primary calculations, they will only be the secondary supporting calculations they will be supporting but you have written in descriptive form the amount of after tax proceeds i have explained what are after tax proceeds uh, the impact of the transaction netted off with the amount of proceeds which will be available from the sale of the fixed equipment and the resultant tax consequences for both the seller and the reinvested uh, equipment that is the motorcycle for the Basser. Now, moving to the answer. As the tax return down value of S Limited pool is nil, the disposal of the machine will not give rise to a balancing charge. Uh, the disposal of the machine will give rise to a balancing charge of twenty thousand. Balancing charge of twenty thousand. What? How does it implicate? It says that you have to relate it to what? You say that sold an item of uh, sold an item of fixed equipment for proceeds twenty thousand, and the value of the main pool was nil at that time. The value of pool is nil, but you are selling it off for twenty thousand. So it never says that actual things available in the pool were none. No, the tax return down value of that pool was nil. It may be because of anything. Maybe you have. Uh, claimed it from uh, quite a long time that is that is not the concern here but it says that it had practically some equipment that is written off in your books and you are selling it off for 20,000 so it says that there will be a balancing charge a balancing charge on pool can arise when the equipment exceeds the value of the total pool here the value of the total pool is zero and it is sold for 20,000 so there will be a balancing charge of 20,000 pounds. I hope this is clear. This is a technical point relating to the capital allowances and uh, I, I try to make it uh, clear. So this will increase. That's good Evelyn. Nice to see you in the session. This will increase spider limited taxable trading profit. Obviously it's a balancing charge. Balancing charge will be adding into your profits. And this will be increasing your taxable total profits. A capital loss will not arise on the disposal of equipment because it has qualified it already it qualified for capital allowances. Capital loss will not be arising because the capital losses that is the explain that that is the expense that has already been claimed. As the equipment is a depreciating asset for capital tax purposes, the chargeable gain of thirty eight thousand, which was deferred against the purchase of equipment will become chargeable on its disposal which will also increase the spider tax uh, limited uh, spider limited taxable total profit obviously the reinvestments were in a depreciating asset and we have read that the gain is unfrozen on the earlier of number one date was 10 years after the purchase the second date was this uh, the date on which uh, the asset ceases to be used in the business or the date on which the asset is actually disposed of any date coming earlier will increase the gain so that great that gain when increased will actually enhance the profits that will be taxed for the company so in this case it will be adding into your taxable total profit so two things will be contributing the gain that was already rolled over or deferred 
and the balancing charge as well the additional corporation tax arising as a result of this transaction will be the balancing charge plus the deferred gain because being unfreezed total of 38000 plus 20000 into 19% single rate of corporation tax 11020 there is a mistake done by the students that you are calculating for spada limited the question in p6 they are simultaneously dealing, dealing with income tax uh, of a person maybe uh, CGT, IHT for the person and some aspect for the company. So while answering you should know, you should keep a very close eye on the part you are answering. Here you are answering the tax computation for the company. So you are using the relevant rate of the company. The after tax proceeds available to purchase motorcycle will be 8980 that is 20,000 minus 11020 the impact of tax netted off with the proceeds so i hope this is pretty much clear to you all of you guys s limited is a closed company as all of its share capital is owned by the two persons who are therefore participators in the company as Besser is not a director or employee of s limited the gift to him of the motorcycle will be treated as a distribution you see that the examiner has this much of leverage that it can test any of the area by just adding certain lines into the question now the students who were able to identify that it is a closed company what is a closed company can anybody tell me evelyn ravi come on guys i need to know what is a closed company please come on hurry up we don't have all day Controlled by two or less. It's run by a family. Not just two, Ravi. Five or fewer. Tommy, where are you? I need the answer, man. Owned by the shareholders? Yes, that's it. Very well said. So, mostly these are the small businesses run by the family. Controlled by five or fewer shareholders or participators that's it jack ryan welcome to the session ryan uh maybe ryan or jack uh, thank you for the answer you guys are very right so not just identifying that it's a closed company but you have written it out and among those eight marks you are in a position that you have gained uh, a decent marking here by identifying this thing as basser is not a director now once you have identified that it is a closed company and the person who has been gifted or the person who has been gifted that uh, motorcycle is not a director or employee. So he is purely a participator, a shareholder. So for a shareholder, it is, it is treated as to be the distribution of income. So Bessel will be treated as if it had received a dividend. Dividend equal to the market value of the motorcycle in 2018-19. Accordingly, S Limited cannot deduct capital allowances or any other amount in respect of the motorcycle had it been an employee. So maybe uh, the case would have been different. But now he is purely a participator that is a shareholder for shareholders. Everything given to them is treated as an as a dividend. And it is not being dividend it is not allowed for the company to subtract it from its taxable total profits or from its trading profits as a legit allowable expense yes jack ryan it's a disallowed expense that is why it is not being covered so guys guys that is it this was the question we started yesterday after going through the inheritance tax and cgt's reliefs and we have seen that in order to construct a answer that is meaningful and for the okay what tommy is saying tommy is always coming up with some very good questions and very good the company cannot claim definitely that definitely because it's a dividend dividend is a disallowed expense you cannot claim any capital allowances on that agree tommy you're right 
so uh, guys again i am going to uh, highlight certain points that are in this answer going to be the favorite of the examiner and in next exam if you are able to write such kind of questions the appreciation will be for you that the examiner will be writing in its report that some students were able to find and write this point so you i want that you guys are those students who are able to find and convert it into your expressions along with the calculations you have seen that for these eight marks i have written these three uh, eight 11 12 13 14 not more than 22 lines and in these 22 lines i have not made the bulky calculations no not at all i simply started explaining that what is the return on value of the pool what is the disposal and what will be the impact of it explain the balancing chart that is 20000 so calculation being done 20000 minus 0 20000 balance chart i put it there and i have i have simply explained that this is a balancing chart and this will be increasing my taxable total profits job one done the second job that the capital loss will not arise on the disposal of the equipment because it qualified for the capital allowances because the equipment is used by s limited so this equipment is a depreciating asset it was qualifying for the capital allowances so point two explained secondly the gain that was deferred was of 38,000 when uh, in case of a depreciating asset among those three events it unfreezes when it is unfrozen that 38,000 that was originally deferred has again came into play so no calculations as yet 20,000 this 38,000 the other one simply explained in the explanation okay moving on the additional corporation tax i simply added these two and i multiplied it with the relevant rate and it is again within the narration being explained that the additional impact will be 11020 the 20000 here is already explained in the first paragraph 38000 being explained in the second paragraph 19% is the rate that the examiner knows and no, is not expecting you to explain that the total additional corporation taxes here 11020 explained then the wording used was that after tax proceeds so the after tax proceeds identified the proceeds identified this corporation tax so the tax impact netted with the proceeds equals to 8980 and these are what was expected by the examiner the second part asked about uh, the treatment if it uh, if the motorcycle was to be given to Bassett and we have explained that the background is what the background is explained because without explaining the background we cannot identify any close company and we cannot identify the person who has been gifted is the shareholder only because if we do not do that the treatment will be vague we cannot simply ascertain the treatment as long as we do not get ourselves cleared that the person is an employee and a shareholder or is just a shareholder in this case he was just a shareholder we have, we have explained that this is how things will be done i hope everything is clear you for you guys through this question i'm going to the question section evelyn ravi pavad is it clear to you guys the technique used to do the question all clear thank you very much okay guys yes need to try myself yes good okay uh, uh somebody asked for the de minimus limit to be explained so i will quickly go through the de minimus limit can anybody tell why we we use uh, to test the de minimus limits why this de minimus limit is in place by hmrc for VAT? can anybody please Tommy, again, I'm counting on you, man.
so what why why we 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 incorporate the minimus limit is it for output vat for input vat because some businesses are providing taxable as well as exam services good where an individual deals in both taxable okay understood but so that yes yes ryan you are right so that he can claim input credit on it see the question you have to understand i said for what this has been incorporated this has been incorporated to recover irrecoverable input value added tax so all those informations given initially by fawad by jack and by ehtisham it was correct but had it been one mark question it it was simply asking you to recover the irrecoverable input back that would have been ample uh, that would have been an ample answer all the other details they would never have been requested by the examiner so you have to understand the question and you have to put up an answer but still uh, you have time to prepare for the exam uh, this is not your exam so no worries at all but guys uh, one thing is for sure that uh, your preparation is pretty much decent as far as uh, all of the participating students are concerned you are able to uh, question me on the topics we are covering you are able to answer me on the questions that i ask you so i guess uh, if you keep on trying today is the 12th of november you have ample time like 20 25 days till examination and these 25 days can be the make or break thing but the the, the current preparation i feel you guys have uh, you can score very good marks just have to focus on the time management just have to focus on the technical areas being brought forward from tx examination the questions we have attempted the syllabus we have gone through the examiner comments we have gone through they have clearly been asking again and again and again that the students who were lacking the tx technical knowledge brought forward have flunked their paper so i don't want any of you guys to simply leave that again please go through the tx course contents they are the most critical parts the application of them will be changed you are no more be asked for the calculations that you did in f6 examination but you will be expected to apply the knowledge from those areas into the scenarios given in the examination in your words as a tax manager or a tax partner or someone who is more than a tax trainee or a tax junior i hope you won't be leaving tx now that's good okay so the deal minimum limit deals with the irrecoverable input vat and uh, the deal minimum limit we have uh, this little information kaplan adx book help to take uh, tackle the f6 course yes 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 we have the expandable text they they have uh, added a lot in that and uh, if still uh, you feel that there is something left you can always go to the acc website you can access the technical articles of uh, f6 and uh, p6 they will be equally very much helpful to you but the one more thing that i would add here is please go through the examiner comments of previous at least four attempts if you go through the examiner comments of four attempts i have gone through them and and in these sessions i explained each of that point that he has raised but since it is not a face to face interaction you might not have capitalized on everything that i uh, said you are kindly requested to go through the technical articles and examiner comments relating to p6 you will be getting a very good idea how to pass the paper and this will be the cherry on the top of this session and this will be very much helpful to you okay guys moving on to the d minimus limits the d minimus limits are let me just shrink it out okay the total input vat less than 625 per month and exempt supplies are 
less than 50% of the total supply. Now, this is not something that is very difficult to understand. You just have to uh, add some specific things in your mind. Two things for the first case. What is, what of them? If you say there are some exam supplies and there are total supplies. So the exam supplies will be the part of the total supplies as well. So they say that if the total in input, input VAT, VAT is this way per month and exam supplies are less than 50% of the total supplies, you take out the total supplies, you multiply it by, by 50%, you get the limit. And if your exam supplies are less than 50% and this amount is there, then the first test of de minimis limit is satisfied. On the second thing, your total input VAT less input VAT directly related to the taxable supplies. Now you have to highlight your taxable supplies. And when you highlight your taxable supplies, you calculate the VAT directly related to those taxable supplies. And then the total input VAT is subtracted. And if it is in this pattern, and exam supplies are less than the 50% of the total supplies as you discussed in the above case, then the second test will be satisfied as well. So there is no need to just memorize it, try to understand it. The first test is again used in the second test along with the difference between the total input VAT less the input VAT directly related to the taxable supply. So when the first test is clear to you, the second test is basically the extension of the first step. In everything you have done in first step is coupled with and other thing that is total input VAT less the input VAT directly relatable, relatable to the taxable supplies. Okay. Then the last one is input VAT related to exam supplies is in this pattern and input VAT relating to exam supplies less than 50% of the total input VAT. So the total input VAT you have calculated, you multiplied by, by this figure to calculate the limit and the input VAT relating to the exam supplies comparison in comparison to that limit is following this pattern the third point the third limit of de minimis limit the third test of the de minimis limit will be satisfied and you could recover your input VAT in that fashion it is not very technical it is very simple you just need to know what the exam supplies are, what the total supplies are, what percentage is to be applied to exam supplies or total supplies, in what fashion you are going to use the uh, VAT that is related to the, uh, that is directly related to taxable supplies. And all these rules will be very much on your fingertips. Annual test is the business can apply the de minimis limit once a year rather than every return period. All of you guys will be aware that there will be uh, there are VAT periods. You are not going to apply this test in every period, but you could simply apply it once a year. If it is uh, if it is met, the business was in the minimum limit in the previous year, and the annual test is applied consistently throughout the current year. And the input VAT for the current year is not expected to exceed 1 million. So the overall limit for this is you are not exceeding 1 million at the end of the accounting period. So this test has been applied for once a period. At the end of the accounting period, this will be reviewed again based on the year as a whole. And if there is any adjustment that is to be required, that will be passed. And your de minimis limit status will be based upon that very thing. Okay, there are some questions. Kaplan ATX book to I have told you this. Good evening. Is there is is there a WhatsApp group for this session? Please would love to join. Guys, uh, once we conclude the session today, every person who has texted me on my WhatsApp, I will be made, making a group for you, and then you could ask me the questions that you wanted to ask, but was not able to ask okay can you take an example 
Uh, yes, Tommy. Uh, let me see if if there is some question. I I will be applying it to that if the time is ample. Uh, I hope there is a question that we will try to figure it out. Okay. So guys, very very text is done. Now the third thing, the most important thing, and something uh, we could say that features an examination was the share schemes. Who was most interested in these share schemes? Questions. So please share your number. Pavad, I have shared it. I will be sharing it again. Double zero nine two. I have shared it. Sure, or Sola. Sorry if I don't pronounce 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 your name correctly, because uh, it might be my first time pronouncing your name. So please uh, pardon if if it, if it is not correctly pronounced. <laughs> sure. Uh, had you been in the first session, I I would have been calling your name again and again. But unfortunately, this is the last session. So uh, I will be calling you Bolu. Thank you, Bolu, for joining in, and I hope you get out some uh, beneficial input from these sessions. Okay, guys. So share schemes we are going to discuss. I will be quickly going through them. Uh, but you know that uh, if you analyze any past exam paper, these uh, schemes are. Uh, Jack, they will be shared with you with the guys who have already been subscribed for this session. I guess the ACCA you could you could simply email uh, on you could simply ask on an email that you require the link for the audio recordings or maybe the video recordings, and they will simply give you. Bolu, just give me a text on my number I have shared. So I will be adding you into the group. Okay. So, pleasure is all mine, Jack. So, guys, uh, uh, these shared schemes, I haven't seen any paper in which they are totally ignored. If, 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 if at least they are at least asked for two marks, three marks, and if, the mo if at the most they are even gone for, eight marks nine marks so uh, the share schemes are relatively easy marks to score three marks i could i i am unable to see your number jack i'm i'm i'm, I'm writing it again for you good you please gagandeep there you go buddy Okay, guys, hold your questions for five, seven minutes so that I could go through the share schemes and we will be back to the question session again. Uh, the today's session I really want is mainly based upon the question session so that if there are any difficulties for you relating to any topic or any specific things, I could answer that. Uh, one hour is almost gone. We are left with the little time so uh, i'll quickly go through the share schemes and then we will be moving to your questions again and there will be a question that i have attempted for you on excel i will be guiding you how to do that on excel as well okay guys i'm closing the window for the questions let's go through the share schemes i i have uh, opted for these four schemes i believe that uh, was asked by ravi and some other students as well okay see. number one is share incentive plan so you know that what is the share incentive i'm not talking about any plans what are the share incentives if you are being given the liberty to subscribe for some shares at some discounts at something uh, less than a little market value that will be your incentive and in these cases a raise of hand is here 
okay so uh, the tax uh, the income tax advantage from sib is when you receive them pay no income tax or nic if you hold the shares for more than five years so the basic minimum holding period is five years and if you have them for five years no income tax or nic is being paid on the shares had in share incentive plans capital gains tax when you sell these shares when you remove the shares from the plan the cost of the shares is equal to the market value nothing has been done prior to that so the market value will be the consideration when removed there will be no capital gains tax how to get the tax advantage treatment is like share must be offered to all employees see these are the conditions that are to be satisfied if they are not to be satisfied they are not satisfied you will not be getting any incentive out of everything you do in these schemes so the conditions the qualifying conditions are very much necessary to be followed number one condition for sip is shares must be offered to all employees who have been working in the company for more than 18 months you cannot be selective because hmrc says that if it is a plan then it should be given to every person who actually wants to subscribe you cannot be selective you cannot simply be rewarding the persons you want to reward i hope it is clear the second one is maximum value of shares that employer can give to each employee each tax year cannot exceed 3600 maximum amount given by the employer to every employee every year cannot exceed 3600 if any person gets it more than 3600 it is going to compromise shares must be held for five years and the minimum period as mentioned already is five years consequences of withdrawing the shares before five years from sib if you do that in less than three years income tax and nic con consequences will be the income tax and class one primary nic are payable in the tax year of withdrawal based on the market value when withdrawal when you will be doing the withdrawals the market value will be taken and on that market value the relevant income tax rates and class one primary nic will be applicable withdrawing shares in more than three years but less than five years so you have gone past three years but the five year mark is not yet completed then income tax and class one primary nic's are payable in the tax year of withdrawal based on the lower off it remains the same but an additional point of being lower off is being added market value when first awarded and market value when withdrawn from sip which whichever is lower is going to be taken just to add some facilitation that you kept it for a reasonable period of time with you and capital gains tax for capital gains tax implications the base cost of the share is the market value at the time they are withdrawn from the share incentive plan when you withdraw the shares out of the investment incentive plan at the time the prevailing market value will be the base cost and this will be used for the gains Ravi, helpful or not? Don't say that, not please. Still not hundred percent, but helpful. Okay. Okay, let me let me share a, a shortcut with you. That, that this is a simple thing that I could do for you. What you have to do for a share in, for any share scheme, that is the basic thing you need to know is the qualifying conditions. Okay, Ravi, what you have to do is you have to be very much sure what qualifying conditions are there are uh, in some cases three there are some in some cases there are four there in some cases five but you have to remember at least three critical qualifying conditions once they are known to you it is very simple that then you could apply the relevant rates and how many rates are going to be applied see uh, the shares are going to give you two kind of uh, incomes number one is the dividends and what tax you apply on them it's the income tax and the other one is if you dispose the shares 
you apply capital gains tax on it so again making your mind clear about either the income tax will be applied or the cgt will be applied while retaining the shares while retaining the shares the tax concern will be income tax and when we will be disposing of the shares this is the basic understanding that we are concerned with capital gains tax so considering all these things in mind you could simply go and note the consequences if you use for the qualifying period no tax is involved and like these three points i guess it will be helpful for you then we see company share options plans we call it csop a share option is an offer to an employee of a right to purchase shares at a future date at a predetermined fixed price which is set at the time the offer is made can anybody tell me uh, why the right issue is issued to the uh, this is not relevant exactly relevant here but i really want to know that if you guys know that why the right issue is given to the existing shareholders why we cannot simply go to the market and issue new shares why is there need to make an offer to the existing shareholders for the right issues i'm waiting for the answers tommy Not to dilute, but to give them a preference so that do not dilute. Evelyn, very nice. Providing existing shareholders a share prices go to the market cheaper and then. Shashini Namkala. That's great. All of these questions are very much relevant. Uh, all of these answers are very much relevant and on point. The best answer here, uh, I could say, is of Tommy and Evelyn that the dilution. Uh, of shareholding because if if the company is already positioned on 51% and 49% and by mere uh, issue of this uh, right thing it could actually change the management of the company so the existing shareholders are being offered and if they are not considering themselves interested then if any change happens there is no point of uh, going against it but as far as the current condition is concerned you have to offer them to the existing shareholders good everybody and thank you very much for answering uh, you people are awesome so the predetermined fixed price is usually below the market value of the shares at that time obviously if the predetermined price is more than the market value or is equal to the market value there is no uh, lucrativeness in that and why a person would be going for that if you could get the same thing from the market at the same price why will you be give, going for this option they are definitely at some fixed price but it is usually lower than the market value the taxation consequences for share options depend on whether or not they are approved by hmrc as follows the approval of hmrc is very much kind of critical here the tax advantage share option schemes are the company share option plan the enterprise management incentive share option schemes and say e save as you earn option scheme so there are different schemes in this case the income tax implications here on grant when these options are granted you do not need to pay again the point on which they are being issued the point they are on which they are being exercised the point on which they are being disposed these are the critical points these are the critical timing of the uh, of, of a particular action that you are taking so we could see that on the grant of such options you don't have to pay any income tax or nic's because on the grant of the options you are not actually materializing any cash benefit out of it it is a benefit but it is in your financial books that you could see that if i do it 
if i dispose it or if it if i look it in the financial terms there is a financial benefit being embedded but you have not cashed it yet if you have not cashed it if there is nothing significant in your hand in the form of cash you won't be paying any taxes so on grant no income tax or nic being applied on exercise when you exercise it you pay income tax and ic if the market value at the grant date is more than the exercise price then the difference will be the taxable benefit because the price you are exercising for example is two and the market value is three so the benefit to you is pretty much clear that at that very time that option that you are being exercising is rupee one or pound one more than the exercise rate that is the actual benefit you are being receiving so it is taxable there for cgd when you sell the shares you pay cgd and cgd is calculated market value at the sale date minus market value at the grant date because if there is any difference it has already been adjusted or being taxed and it says that you will straight away be taking uh, the differential of the market value at the sale date minus market value at the grant date into cgt tax rate whatever it is being ap uh, applicable you can uh, actually use it to calculate the cgt related there are conditions that the company and employee must satisfy for the share options to get tax advantage treatment again as i have stressed enough on that without the qualifying conditions there will be no relief given what are the qualifying conditions the company needs to satisfy number one is gross assets must not exceed 30 mil pounds so the gross assets of the company they must not be exceeding 30 million at any time plus the employees in the company must not exceed 250 it is a company that is having maximum employees up to 250 in number maximum value of share options issued must not exceed 3 million pounds so the share option issued at any time are not exceeding 3 million pounds i hope these three conditions are clear and these three conditions are to be satisfied by the company but in this case company is offering the options and the options are being utilized by the employees and for the employees the conditions to be satisfied the conditions they have to satisfy are the maximum value of share option that can be issued is 30000 pounds per employee so an employee cannot exceed 30000 pounds for such share options that is number one for the employee the number two for the employee is that must have ownership is less than 30 percent of the shares and the employee cannot be having more than 30 percent of the shares if it is more than 30 percent of the shares the employee might be some uh, a critical portion or critical part in order to uh, make any make or break any management kind of thing so these are the conditions that have been explained for this the third one here is ei emis which we says emis there are conditions that the company and the employee must satisfy for share options to get tax advantage treatment the conditions to satisfy by the company are gross assets but not again exceed 30 million company in uh, employees in the company must not exceed 250,000. Maximum value again must not exceed 3 million pounds. Conditions for the employee there will be difference here that employee must work for at least 25 hours per week. So they are working employees plus employees must own less than 30% of the shares in the company. Same as that maximum value of share options per employee is 250,000. In the above case it was. 30,000. So here the person in value in the above case, the percentage was still 30%, but the value was restricted to 30,000. 
per employee. But here it says per employee, again, it remains less than 30%, but the value in pounds can be 50,000. So obviously, the base figure in this case will be much higher than the above. Ravi, are you with me? Getting getting the better idea? Great, buddy. This effort is for you guys. Saying related share option, savings related share option schemes. These are the says. What is the treatment of the pay by say? I always remember the pay thing. So can anybody tell me if Tommy, uh, Ravi, Fawad, Evelyn? We have two Evelyns with us. Uh, the the second Evelyn, who's not much active, can you please tell what is the treatment of pay? Yes, you're right. So, pay as you earn from every salary month. What is the treatment in 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 our uh, calculations? We subtract it from the income tax liability to reach out to our income tax payable. These are the tax credits. Okay, very nice, Jawad Khan. Thank you, Jawad. Thank you for your answer. Much appreciated, brother. So we go to, let me just, uh, see. for the questions. Okay, no questions yet. Okay, what are the says? Employees are granted an option to buy shares and then save through a tax-free savings scheme in order to raise funds to exercise the option. There is a favorable tax treatment for share option schemes that are linked to say contract. How does the scheme operate? Each employee pays a minimum of five pounds per month and a maximum of 500 pounds per month into a SAE scheme for a period of three to five years. So you are accumulating your money as per the amount you can set aside. It can either be at least five pound or at most 500 pounds per month per employee for a period up to three or five. So the basic minimum period is three and the maximum period as per this line may be five years. Interest on the scheme is exempt from the income tax. So simply said that the interest on such scheme will be exempt from income tax. Any interest coming out of it will not be attracting any income tax. At the end of the scheme, the money. Okay, can anybody tell me uh, if, 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 if I, I am hypothetically assuming that uh, the interest from such scheme is 1000 pound and a person is a high rate taxpayer will it be consuming the nil rate band available to that person how much is the nil rate band for savings income for a high rate person five hundred limit can it, Tommy, can you please enlighten Ravi on this? Is he right? Limit is 500, agreed Ravi, but the exempt income will consume, the exempt income will consume the nil rate band or not? This is the question. The, no, it won't. Very good Ravi, you're right. Since it is an exempt income, it nil rate band is something that is chargeable at the rate of 0%. But if you say that it is exempt, it won't be consuming the nil rate band. Fair enough. Can anybody tell me what is the starting rate?
can anybody tell me what is the starting rate on savings income and why it is applied just on saving incomes for which facilitation you want to create for those people where is the answer come on guys tommy your answer is required buddy these are the nil rate bands ravi i am talking about the starting rate yes kate kate mess up it is 5000 starting rate um, it is taxed at with, with which percentage okay you are right 0% on which income yes evelyn it's 0% on which income saving incomes if not taxable it is sham says if yes it is sham good if non taxable income not taxable first income can anybody write down the reason if no non saving income yes very right it is sham and evelyn on point the rest of you as well kate as well and uh, joseni also yes guys starting rate is considered to be given because you could see that if your earned income or your non saving income is within 5000 it means that yes to chuseni you're right uh, let me finish my sentence so that uh, those who do not know uh, get a clear idea it is like for the people whose earned income or non saving income is within 5000 it means that by working out by consuming the resources present in the economy they are not able to generate enough of the income that is exceeding 5000 but they have somehow managed to place their funds under some investments on which they are earning interest so hmrc considers to support them since they are not getting the earned income and they are giving them the privilege to tax their saving income if it is falling within first 5000 of the taxable income by this they are going to facilitate those persons who are not able to generate much uh, of their earned income they may be widows who are not able to work or there may be some people with disabilities who are not able to work or if they are working they are not being paid uh, much to meet uh, to meet both their ends so this was the logical reasoning of hmrc for giving this uh, extra advantage to to the person okay i hope this is clear so uh, coupling it up with the, the personal allowance the nil rate bands available to saving uh, and the dividend income this can be very much helpful for the persons who are not able to earn much great so the it says that interest on the scheme is exempt from income tax at the end of the scheme the money can be used to exercise the share options or the employee may just withdraw the money on their own simple as that when the scheme ends the money accumulated as per your accumulation either you were um uh, putting minimum 5% uh, 5 pound per month or maybe maximum of 500 pounds per month the money accumulated will be used to exercise the share option or simply you could withdraw the money that you have accumulated income tax and nic implications are none when the options are granted no income tax or nics are applicable on the grant of the options and on the exercise of the options and for the capital gains tax implications when such shares are disposed there may be capital gain for them and that would obviously be considered conditions for say scheme are the amount saved must be at least 5 per month but cannot exceed 500 the same as we have gone through 
the saving contract must be for at least three or five years again it is responsive or in um, continuation to what we have uh, gone through above the scheme must be available to all employees who have worked for the specified qualifying period which cannot exceed five years again you just cannot reward to the employees you want to reward you have to give them without any discriminations you have to follow the rules of uniformity and equality to ensure that every employee see one end is five pounds the other end is 500 pounds so the even the pns even the very smaller contributors to the organization and the high-end contributors the organizations can plan the saving for them the exercise price must be at least 80 percent of the shares market value at the time when the option is exercised so if the if, if the market value is 10 that exercise price must be at least 80 percent at least eight at that time so these are the share schemes that we've gone through if there are any problems still you can always uh, text me or email me i will be very much happy answering your questions guys these this is it from my side on the shares schemes and uh, we have this question that we will be attempting for corporation tax and i saved next we will be doing this question i have sorted it out on excel for you guys so that i could quickly go through the question and the solution of it we we are remaining time now we have to conclude our session in uh, 90 minutes from now and we need to take a break uh, as well in that so uh, i will be quickly going through the question and its solution i have done it uh, earlier for you so guys uh, again i would urge you if there are any questions if there are some specific pain points from any area of the syllabus you could please ask me and i will be very 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 happy to answer you okay guys uh, let's go through this question let's go through the introductory paragraph and the requirements then we could have a break of 15 20 minutes then we will come back and sort out this question uh, we will be quickly sorting out the question then we will again be focusing on some exam techniques some exam points and meanwhile i will be answering every question that you will be asking me provided it could be answerable how how we get professional marks I, 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 I told this in the first uh, session you will be getting the videos but uh, while attempting this question I will be uh, enlightening on that how can we get the professional and ethical mar uh, marks related to ethics the most easy marks in the paper are the professional marks plus the marks related to the ethics the professional marks you can get by writing a report if it is said that you write a report if it is said that you write a memo you follow the requirement of the question you you do whatever you were directed to do by the examiner you easily get those professional marks and for the ethical marks you have to understand the scenario and you have to go through the objectives of ethics that are being compromised in that particular scenario you have to refer to that scenario and you could say that these uh, pillars are being compromised and the or these pillars are being under question and uh, either they can be uh, eliminated simply or if not eliminated we could at least place some safeguards and for each of the problem there will be a separate safeguard that could be identified and you will be identifying those safeguards and then you could easily be getting those ethical marks i hope it's clear so now your manager has received a letter from Mita, the owner and the managing director of P Limited, 
a client of your firm extracts from the letter together with extracts from an email from your manager detailing the work you require to do are set as below again like the questions uh, we attempted uh, one question we already uh, did yesterday that was the same style question in which your manager received a letter in that it was a meeting with the client now you're receiving a letter from your client that is the owner and the managing director of some corporation that is a client of your firm the now manager is not writing anything in this it is giving you the extract from the letter the letter that was written by the client to your manager the manager is going to share the extract of that letter to you together with the extract from an email from your manager detailing the work you are required to do so so the data source here is the letter from the managing director of the company plus the directions by your manager will be given in the accompanying email from your manager for you i hope this is clear to you guys the opening paragraph first we go through the opening paragraph then we go through the requirements what is required question is worth 25 marks you could see the first uh, first part is uh, worth four marks the second part so we will be having enough details of q limited since it is worth 15 marks and for r limited we have six marks it says that carry the work required as requested by the manager in email the following marks are available again the requirement this is the typical style of asking a question that you are required that the requirement is shown separately with the marks uh, available against every requirement and it is referring to the email of the manager okay what the email of the manager says Sorry guys, let me just see from where the email begins. Yes, the extract from the email. I don't know what happened. The computer has just gone slow. Okay. guys let's have a break first we will be back at 10 20. meanwhile i fixed this document i don't know what happened to it it is not uh, coming as i wanted okay I'll, I'll be fixing it and see you in good 20 minutes thank you guys i hope you all are you all are back and uh, some of the some of you guys may have gone through the question uh in this break time okay so guys 
uh, we were going to go through the extract from the email of the manager uh, who was going to instruct us what we need to require in this specific question. And uh, it says that for P limited, first of all, we are going through, through what for P limited is, what for Q limited is, what for R limited is, and then we will go back to the main question and then we will be sorting it out as per the requirements given. Meta owns the whole of the ordinary share capital of P limited, which is an unquoted trading company. It is an unquoted, it is a trading company and it is also a personal company more than about well, more than 5% shares of the uh, company are being uh, held. Basically, it's a wholly owned company for him. Meta began trading as an unincorporated business on 1st June 2012. On 1st April 2, 2015, when the assets of a business were worth 120,000, she incorporated her business by selling all of the net assets to be limited in exchange of 10,000 ordinary shares. This sale resulted in total chargeable gains of 37,400 pounds, uh, all of which were relieved by incorporation relief. P Limited prepares 31st March, uh, accounts till 31st March each year. It does not own any assets other than those which are used in its trade. Fairly simple question. Uh, as, as, as we talk about the P Limited, the simple uh, approach is required. Uh, we are given uh, that the assets of the business were worth 120,000 and uh, it was a total exchange. The sale was for, against the exchange for 10,000 ordinary shares and the total gain out of this sale was 37,400. So the amount of gain has already been calculated. And for the Q Limited, Q Limited will be a small enterprise for the purpose of the additional tax relief for the expenditure on research and development here. Uh, here the concern is related to CGT and here the concern is related to the uh, enhanced expenditure on research and development that is given for small and medium enterprises and large companies. We know that there are different rules being applicable on the large companies and different rules being applicable on the small and medium sized enterprises. So it should be mentioned and it is mentioned that it is a small enterprise. So it will be qualifying for the additional 130% of the qualifying relief. That is total to 30% of the amounts being used in such genre will be taken uh, for tax uh, savings. I have already established that the research to be carried out by Q Limited will qualify for this relief. See, this has been established by the manager for you. You do not need to waste time on that. For looking for the qualifying conditions, Q Limited will not surrender any part of loss in return for the cash refund from HMRC. You people know that where such loss arises, uh, where the loss from these qualifying expenditures arises, you may surrender the loss and you get a cash back of 14.1%, but it is clearly stated that there will be no cash back opted by the Q Limited. For R Limited, R Limited has not been, R Limited has not made an election to exempt the profits of its overseas permanent establishment from UK tax. The rate of corporation tax in the country of T is 14%. Other than that, the tax system in T is the same as in that of the UK, and there is no double tax treaty already between UK and Tyrona. So these are very important notes that is given in the email of the manager, and he is saying you, he is directing you to carry out the following work. Uh, first thing he is uh, asking you to sale of 4,000 shares in P Limited. On 1st May 2020, calculate Meta's capital gains tax liability in respect of this proposed sale to NED, assuming the available reliefs will be claimed. So all the reliefs that are available in this sale of 4,000 will be accounted for. Meta resident in the UK, you should assume that she will be a higher rate taxpayer in 2021 and the CGT annual exam will not be available to her again the manager has conducted all those research work and he is clearly giving you the instructions what 
to look at and what not to look at for things you should not looking at you should not be looking at are the things that are actually going to save you time and they're actually going to get you the marks for not going after things which are not required okay that is the first requirement the second requirement in case of few limited that was the major uh, that that part was of the major marks before going to that we we go for the but let, let's finish this first for q limited what you have to do explain the tax deduction which will be available to q limited in respect of scientific research cost of 102 to be incurred in the in the year ending 31st march 2021 there are some research costs and they are of 102000 pounds explain the tax treatment of the proposed purchase of q of the clock brand and intangible fixed asset for 35000 now you see that the intangible asset treatment is done uh, as in line with the accounting treatment or maybe it is impaired at the fixed rate of 4%. So there might be the case when we go through the details of this uh, question. Calculate the amended budgeted tax adjusted trading loss for Q limited for the year ending 31st March 2021, taking into account explanations requested above. Explain how the Q limited amended budget trading loss will be available for the use of P limited. So the group of companies is also being involved. Value added tax implications are also to be explained of Q limited purchasing advice from the overseas supplier rather than one based in UK. So what will be the implications if you choose an overseas supply or what are the implications if you choose a UK based supplier? For R limited, what you have to do is you have to explain why the profits in R limited are being subject to the corporation tax. Calculate the R limited expected UK corporation tax liability for the year ending 31st March 2021 based on the information available and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of R limited. Making an election to exempt the profits of its permanent establishment in Tyrona from the UK tax. So it is a complete package from corporation tax point of view where it is trying to test each point that may be related to cgt that may be related to any research expenditure or some value added tax aspects and uh, the aspects of uh, the overseas as well so all of these things are being tested in this question now going to the main body of the question we have seen what we have to do for q limited for r limited and for p limited now let's go through this uh, detail that has been shared by us from the extract of the letter from Meta. Sale of 4,000 ordinary shares. What happened in this case on 1st May 2020? I am going to sell 4,000 shares in P Limited to my brother. Okay, there is some connection established. It is between the connected persons. The brother name is Ned. I note from the work you have already done that the current market value of these shares is to 60,000 pounds. However, because I'm keen to get NED involved, I have agreed the price of 200,000. See, she's going to sell 4,000 shares to her brother. Current market value is 260 and the price going to, to be charged is 200,000. So it is an undervalue sale. Now we have to find the cost. What is the cost of it? So that we could see how the gift relief will come into play. Ned, who is UK resident, will sign up the claim for capital gains tax relief in respect of the sale. It means that any gain that is going to pertain to Meta will be transferred to Ned. Okay.
okay guys uh, if you could see that for p limited it says that the business uh, was worthing 120000 pounds i just wanted to make it clear for you so that you could see that the market value is the 260000 we all know that if there is a sale between connected persons we will all bit or we will be considering higher of the actual sale proceeds or the market value actual sale proceeds here the consideration is 200000 that will not be relevant we will be taking 260000 since it is a sale between connected persons the market value of the assets of p limited is 120000 so that we are considering it as a cost less incorporation relief incorporation relief we get out as 37 400 I hope the screen is clear. Okay, no questions here. Okay. So this resulted in total chargeable gains of 37,400, which were relieved under incorporation relief. So here, here is the thing: less incorporation relief. This, this, it is clear that. relief of 37400 has been applied with that the gain is 82600 and while using excel you can easily be uh, adding an internal column and then an outer column the outer column will be representing the outer version of the calculation some smaller calculations are to be adjusted in the inner column like here the market value of the assets were 120000 in corporation relief was 37400 so we could see that this is the smaller calculation being done under the smaller uh, under the internal column then we will be transferring this to the outer column and we have seen that the amount uh, if you remember the gift relief rules we said that the amount more than the original cost will be the amount chargeable for gift reliefs see if you could remember in this case the amount above that is 166000 among all the gains if this is chargeable the rest will be Again, hold over under gift relief that we will be helping. And this is something if we calculate uh, uh, for uh, NED, the impact of this 60,000, it will be actually being subtracted from the market value of the assets being transferred to him. And uh, we could easily uh, see that all the conditions of entrepreneur are being met. Uh, entrepreneur relief are being met so the amount uh, chargeable here is 166 960 and we will simply be multiplying it with 10 percent to get our uh, entrepreneur relief in this particular scenario if there is any question you're more than welcome i will re uh, re-explain it you have to simply add an outer column and an inner column some smaller calculations that can be sorted out in the inner column and the results could be taken out to the outer main column where you could uh, express your calculations and you could write the you could apply your main rates and conclude it for yourself now another thing you need to know is you have to put on these pound sign you cannot simply ignore them they are also very important while working out and you have to also make sure that if there is any explanation points you should explain them now in excel everything is clear here in the description i have provided so i don't need to provide any extra notes but if there are any extra notes that would have been used i would be adding the steric and adding all those notes here so that the examiner while seeing the calculation could easily would have referred to the mindset i was having while attempting the question and providing this answer to the examiner i hope this is clear
for B. It says that P is clear now. I am again telling you that the assets, it was given 120,000. She incorporated her business for the exchange for 10,000 ordinary shares. They resulted in gains of 37,400. So the gains were given already that were covered in incorporation relief. It says that all of them were relieved under incorporation relief. So among 120,000, this was relieved under incorporation relief as stated by the examiner we are not calculating any incorporation relief here and the rest of the gain was left with okay now for q limited i hope it is clear q limited will be a smaller enterprise what is what are you expected to do with q limited explain the tax deduction which will be available to Q limited in respect of scientific research cost of unknown two to be incurred in year ending 31st March 2021. First thing you have to do is to establish which kind of company it is. So we could easily see that it is a smaller company. So now we are going to explain each one of the each one of the relevant point that could be impacted here. The equipment and computer hardware will qualify for 100% capital allowance. It is not simply asking you to provide the answer for the research cost it is saying that explain the tax deduction which will be available for q limited in respect of scientific research cost of one or two to be incurred this is number one number two is explain the tax treatment for the proposed purchase of the clock brand that is an intangible fixed asset for thirty-five thousand. calculate the amended budgeted tax adjusted trading profit for q limited for third for year ending 31st march 2021 taking into the accounts explanation requested above so all the above things are to be calculated and their impact has to be posted in the budgeted tax adjusting trading losses and we have to explain based on the above calculation that how much q limited amended budgeted trading loss will be available by its group company p limited and whether value added tax implication for q limited will be what will be the, them if if an overseas uh, supplier is uh, rather than the uk supply is considered now to the answer the equipment and computer hardware will qualify for 100 percent capital allowance and capital expenditure incurred for the purpose of research and development accordingly the total cost incurred of 100 and 102 000 pounds will be deductible for the purpose of corporation tax now keep it simple keep it steady First, two, one or two thousand is the normal deductible expense. So we say it is a normal deductible expense and we qualify it. Uh, then, as Q Limited is a smaller enterprise, first we post the nominal impact. That is, it is an allowed expense, it is deducted. Then we go for the super normal expense that is being granted and it says that 130% as Q Limited will be a smaller enterprise for the research and development purpose, certain categories of revenue expenditure which will be directly related to research and development activity will qualify for an additional 130% deduction when calculating the company's corporation to, uh, when company uh, company's taxable trading income this additional deduction is not available in respect of the capital expenditure on the rental cost there it is it's, there it is in the question being told us there are some rental costs and we know that for rental costs only 65 percent of such amounts qualify for the additional deduction so there is an additional deduction of 130 percent some of the components will straight away qualify for that additional deduction but for some components we first have to calculate the 65 percent amount and then we could move on so the calculation of the tax deduction is available total research cost is 102,000. less equipment and hardware is 27,500. that is the capital expenditure rent uh, as in, as uh, communicated in the exam is 17,400. staff cost that is the rental cost here they were 7,000. So multiplying it by 35,000 to go five zero. Amount qualifying for additional cost or additional deductions will be five four six five zero. So total research cost one or two thousand. And when this added, when this outer this inner column calculation is added with 
this the total uh, taxable uh, so the total tax allowable amount will become 173000 being primarily 102 qualifying straight away and this 54650 qualifying through additional amounts and tax treatment that the first requirement being addressed as as told you by the manager or instructed you by the manager the second requirement we will be doing is the amount of 1000 charged to the statement of profit and loss in respect of this expenditure would be allowable for the purpose of calculating the taxable total profit c for the clog limited it says joint venture q limited on 1st april 2020 i shall incorporate a new company q limited on that day q limited will register for value add tax and begin to trade it will develop a range of products over next few years so it is a multi-dimensional product uh, selling company the planned ownership of the ordinary share capital of q limited is as follows p limited will be having 60 percent either mr bam or uh, either mr bam or mr bam's company bjb bjb will be having 30 percent and cx limited will be having 10 percent p b and cx limited are uk resident company mr bam is resident in the uk so all of these shareholders are being residing in uk just looking if there is any question no questions yet okay for q limited what is the financial information given i have calculated q limited budgeted tax adjusted trading loss the manager has uh, the manager has been uh, using this information from uh, the letter provided by meta and this has already been shared with you and it says that tax adjusted trading losses for year ended 31st march 2021 will be 44000 when calculating the loss i deducted the whole of the cost attributable to this uh, to scientific research amounting 102000 note 1 i also deducted 1000 in respect of clock brand and it will be amortized over the period of 35 years if you could relate to that amortization of 4% thing you you, you must remember that an advantage there is if the asset is of a very long life then we will be disregarding the accounting treatment and moving for four percent annually amortization thing that will be very much beneficial and apparently since this is being amortized for 35 years it will be beneficial so the scientific research costs are equipment and hardware cost is 27500 material is 21000 rent is 17400 electricity and water 6600 staff cost that is 29500 so this one or two that we considered in the calculation is based upon these five components and among those five components one is the rental based thing that only qualifies for 65 percent so we will be uh, we will be working we will be developing a workaround for this as i have shown you in this calculation you could see that total research cost i have calculated that these total research costs are straight away qualifying but for the additional expenditure i need to find uh, i need to subtract this uh, 35 percent disallowed amount and, and then i calculate it like this i hope it is clear if there is any problem please let me know i am just uh, doing it a little quick because i have lesser time and i have to complete this question plus i need to refresh some exam technique points before the end of the session so please bear with me and if there is something not clear to you you are requested to please raise the question okay so the rent is a pro the rent is an appropriate allocation of the rent payable for q limited premises for the year all of the staff costs relate to employees of q limited with the exception of 7000 paid to an external contractor provided by an unconnected company so all the staff cost 29500 if all the staff costs were directly related to it it would have been allowed but since there are external contractors so external contractors has a limitation that only 65 percent of such costs is allowed so we will be 
deducting 35 percent of their cost as we have deducted in the calculations i have shown you already note to purchase of the clock brand on april 2020 quad limited will purchase the clock brand for 35000 pounds advice will then be required on how to develop this brand through the use of social media it is intended that quad limited will purchase this advice from the company based outside eu in a country where the vat rate is nine percent rather than the standard rated supply from a bad registered supply based in uk so telling you that uh, your choices of the supplier and the applicable value added tax rates of that supplier so the question in related to this in relating uh, to the brand was explain the tax treatment of the proposed purchase of clock brand for 3500 so what would be the proposed uh, what would be the tax treatment in this case? Can anybody uh, enlighten me for that, please? Evelyn, Ravi, any of you guys who could please answer what is the potential outcome of this question? How to answer this? The amount of 1000 charge, higher of the cost and accounting amortization, very nice. Failure to answer the amount of 1000 charge to the statement of profit and loss in this respect, uh, in this, in the respect of this expenditure, would be allowable for the purpose of calculating taxable trading profits. Alternatively, the purpose of calculating the company for the purpose of calculating company's taxable trading profits, Quad Limited could elect to write off 1400 if the amount was 35,000 when multiplied by 4 percent. It says that it is 1400 which would clearly be beneficial as uh, evelyn has mentioned the higher of the cost in accounting amortization you could see that this 1400 is higher than actually what she did was 1000 so we will be preferring 1400 in this case it is fairly a straightforward uh, deal to crack here now what was the third uh requirement in case of q limited calculate the amended budgeted tax adjusting trading loss for quad limited for the year ending 31st march taking into the account now you could easily see that what she has done she has made all the calculations by herself including the full amount paid to the external contractor plus the wrong amount of amortization may be the lesser beneficial amount of the amortization so we have to develop a rework of it and how do we do that we will be simply saying that budgeted tax adjusted trading loss we are not going for any handsome calculation again by elaborating it and by doing it from the very scratch we are not doing that what we will be doing that we have already seen that there were total budgeted trading loss of 44,000 the additional deduction we have already uh, seen is 71045 we added it there and the amortization of the clock brand 1000 is already been taken and we are going to take the difference that is of 400 have we added it and very simply very in a very crisp manner we have taken the account of things missed out by the client i hope the guys with me have learned this art of doing the calculations very smartly and efficiently see we started from where she left and we posted the correct impact and we got the desired result out of it guys are you with me clear on this I will be winding up this question. Okay, Evelyn, thank you very much. I will be winding this question uh, in next five ten minutes. And uh, if there is any thing that you want me to uh, explain, I will be happy to do that. Other than that, we will be calling it a day once we are done with the question and certain tips of the examination I give you will be repeated again. Okay, moving on to the next part. We are done with this. What does the next part say? 
So is it just Evelyn who's clear about the things or the rest of the guys are also clear about the calculation, how to do the use of Excel and how to add the explanations and how not to indulge in those things that are not going to yield you any marks. For this calculation, we could have easily adopted that. We started calculating it all over again. It would have wasted a lot of our time, but the smartest way was to take the impact of those. In fact, to take the correct impact of all those things that were not accounted for by the client. Okay, moving on. The next part, explain how much of Q limited amended budgeted trading loss will be available for the use by post limited. So post limited is having 60% ownership. And what is the impact? They have the loss, obviously. So how this loss will be dealt? Both limited will not be able to use the trading loss of Q limited unless Q limited is a consortium company. Had it been the consortium company, then it would have been easily uh, taken into the account. Q limited will be a consortium company if at least 75% of its ordinary shareholding uh is owned by the companies each of which owns at least five percent but less than 75 percent so the combination makes that consortium in which the single company is owning more than five percent but less than 75 percent of the total shareholding of that target company accordingly for consortium relief to be available bjb limited must own 30 percent holding rather than mr berm because mr berm uh, for Mr. Bam, it won't be qualifying for that. We need to have that company uh, owning those shares. If there is any problem in the application of consortium, please let me know. The maximum amount which could be surrendered to Post Limited as consortium relief is the amount of loss into the percentage of shareholding. So 115445 as calculated above into the percentage of shareholding worth 60%. Reflecting post limited holding of 60% in ordinary share capital of Q limited. This will be available only and only if the consortium is made because 60% on 60% there is no group for loss relief. That is formed when 75% shareholding is taken. There is no 75% shareholding there. So if you are not able to uh, use the group for loss relief, then you go for the consortium. And when consortium is made, Two or more companies are owning the shareholding in the pattern that every uh, single company is holding more than 5% or equal to 5% but less than 75% of the shareholding. I will again open the questions. If there are any questions, please ask. Ravi, are you clear? Yes, Adisham, why not? See, we do not say that we get to 30% of the research and development expenditure relief. We say that the research and development expense, if it is qualifying, it is simply tax allowed expenditure. So that 100% of 230% is simply taken as an allowed expenditure. We do it and we just forget it. Now it comes to 130% extra. If you are a small and medium enterprise, you are able to get 130% extra on those research and development expenditures. And for those research and development expenditures, you have to make sure that all the expenditures are in line with the basic requirements. If any services are being taken through the contractual uh, persons, only 65% of that cost is allowed, 35% is disallowed. We bifurcate those total expenses and we adjust them with those adjustments. Uh, and then the amount qualifying is taken as additional expense of 130%. This is how we do it. I hope it's clear. Okay. And I guess the last requirement for this 
explain the value added tax implications of Q limited purchasing advice from the overseas supplier rather than one based in the UK. What are the benefits for this that you are not engaging the supplier based in UK, but you are referring to the supplier based outside the UK where value added tax rate is 9%. Okay, we go to the answer. The provision of this advice will be business to business service. It will be treated as supplied in the UK because that is where Q Limited is established. Obviously, Q Limited will be required to pay VAT at the standard rate of 20% HMRC under the reverse charge principle. The rate of value added tax in the overseas country is irrelevant. That is the most important thing to know that in such cases, whatever the rate of the foreign company or uh, of the foreign company's home uh, is offering is totally irrelevant. The input VAT can be reclaimed on this expense in the same way as any other input VAT you claim. Accordingly, Q Limited VAT position will be the same as if the services had been purchased from the UK supplier. So it means that simply there is no impact simply whatever you treat for a uk supplier you will be following that treatment it is not going to limit or change the scope in that case okay no questions as yet as yet so we move forward for RYB Limited. RYB Limited has explained why the profits at RYB Limited are subject to corporation tax. Let's see what acquisition of RYB Limited says. On 1st May 2020, P Limited will purchase the whole of the ordinary share capital of R Limited. For the purpose of UK tax, R Limited is resident in the UK R Limited trade through the permanent establishment in the country of Tyrona. C. R Limited is a permanent establishment in the country of Tyrona. This is an important point in this case. R Limited budgeted tax trading, a taxable trading profit for the year ending 31st March 2021, all of which relates to its activities in Tyrona is 75,000. So all the activities in Tyrona of R Limited are resulting in the taxable trading profits of 75%, 75,000, these are the budgeted ones. Keep a note of that R Limited has no other source of taxable income and is not expected to make any chargeable gains during the year. So this is the total income that you have to consider. Once we are confident of the profitability of the permanent establishment in Tyrona, it is intended that RYB will establish PE in two other countries. So they have different plans that have uh, been already shared and it says that once we are confident of the profitability of the permanent establishment in Tyrona, it is intended that they will be adding further two uh, further permanent establishments in two other countries. It says explain why the profits of R Limited are subject to UK corporation tax. Can anybody answer me? It is a fairly straightforward question. Guys, I need you to answer because of being a permanent establishment. At the time, elaborate it a little, please. Make me proud, buddy. Okay, great because it is a UK company, P limit is controlled in the UK. That's good. These are all the relevant points that can, uh, okay, assets or business owned by the UK companies will subject to corporation tax. That is good. That says it is a permanent establishment. So all of these things will be very good. Uh, uh, I am very much confident on the preparation of you guys. If you could do go an extra mile uh, on the things you have already achieved, I believe that you guys can score really well 
in the examination you just have to extend yourself to the practice to practice your questions by yourself to master the tx things okay i will be uh, i will be recapping all those important exam technique points once i end the question and then we will be ending the session today value added tax implication for purchasing uh, it is done for the c part Rive Limited is subject to corporation tax on the profit of its permanent establishment in Tirona because a B is not a separate legal entity and UK resident companies are subject to the corporation tax on their worldwide income. This is a simple, crisp, crunch answer. UK corporation tax is 75,000 into 19%. Unilateral double tax, 14% as I mentioned. UK corporation tax liability is 37 five zero in this case that you have to pay and what does the second part says let's go to that and calculate uh arrive limited expected uk corporation tax liability that is that is what we have calculated already discuss the advantages and disadvantages of our limited making an election to exempt profits of its pe in Tyrona from UK tax. So, can anybody answer? This is again fairly a simple question. The advantage of making such election would be that the profits made in Tyrona would not be subject to UK corporation tax. Based on the current rates, the corporation tax in two countries, this would save the corporation tax of 5% as we have displayed in this calculation, that tax would have been saved. If that election is made however it should be recognized that if that there would be no relief in the uk in the event of any losses being incurred in the trade in tyrona in the future once made the election is irrevocable and would apply to all future permanent establishments of rybe limited accordingly there will be no relief in the uk for any loss incurred for any new overseas trade operated by rybe limited so it, it's it's general thing that if we uh, if we are going to make the losses we always operate as extension of the uk trade so that the losses made overseas can be uh, claimed back in the uk but if we expect our operations to yield profits we we treat as as an as our subsidiary and the dividends they are exempt this is something that is being allowed by the tax legislation however such elections under question if they are being made they are irrevocable and once they are done the future risk and rewards will be associated and we cannot simply maneuver them as per our wish that advantage is kate thank you very much it was a very nice answer that corporation tax will be saved at five percent okay guys bingo that is the end of the question uh i have displayed how to attempt on excel there is no big deal in that you simply uh, can uh, add the descriptions in one line and grab the text or maybe you could write the description in this way this is purely dependent upon you the examiner gives you the uh, leverage to do that plus if there are certain calculations that can be fairly simply uh, that can be simply dealt you can add uh, an inner column and an outer column for the uh, for the uh high level calculations the outer column is used for the smaller calculations we use the inner column and bring the results under outer column but if there are certain calculations that are being uh too long we could simply add the working somewhere in the c sheet below or in front and simply we say that for example total research cost working one and from working one we put it there and the examiner could go simply to that working to ensure that the simple the, the, the rules that were to be followed are actually followed or not so guys this is it i hope uh, this session has been fruitful for you and uh, we are done with today's uh, session the question thing now i i will be uh, trying to answer your question in next five to six minutes if there are any specific questions you want to ask and then i will be moving on uh, some refresher of the exam technique 
and then we could simply uh, end the webinar uh, effectively the fifth day of this webinar to conclusion. Okay, if you have trading loss for a sole trader and the loss is carried back to three years under extended carry back, if the business was to make a loss, okay, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing my number. Okay, if the business was to make a loss in first four years, Okay, what an extended question, uh, Ravi. Uh, I welcome you for more questions. Uh, look, buddy, when it says FIFO method, method, I will be simply explaining you what FIFO method is. Uh, when you say you are going to uh, offset in, uh, in, in any loss in FIFO method, it means that uh, in the case of opening years of loss, in the case of opening year of loss, the opening the loss in the opening uh, years is for the first four years of trade see if in i see i say that in the second year of trade i make a loss i can carry it back for three years so as you have written in those three years the year coming in first so if it, it was in 2019 and 2020 so in previous three years 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020. So the first one uh, coming in it would be dealt first, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. In this specific case, it is simple to do that because um, maybe there is uh, some one or two streams of income coming and you could simply calculate a tax refund and do it on the FIFO basis. Plus the second part of your question, you say that you can you set it off against the current year, current tax year. Whenever you do it, you do it against the total profits of the current year, and that is the section 64 relief, not the opening years of loss relief. That is a specific separate section in which you were uh, dealing, and the, the preservation of the personal allowance in that case was not allowed. I hope the question is answered. And for the answer, okay, my number is this. The first one among those three will be the first tax year for the loss relief. The reason for choosing it is it will be fairly very easy to calculate the tax refunds and use them accordingly. Yeah. Any else? Anyone else having any question? Okay, guys. Uh, you all have my number plus my email address, and I will be available on behalf of ACCA Global and Scan School of Accountancy for all of our students attempting the uh, attempting the ATX examination. I would be very happy to answer your questions through email or maybe voice notes. Uh, over the WhatsApp, but still not get your number. Fawad, there it is, buddy. I hope you get it now. So,
So everyone has the same <laughs> question that you still not have my number. Now everyone, is it clear? You can't see my number. There you go, Jawad. I am replying to your answer. Tommy, thank you very much. You have been, uh, uh, all of the students, they uh, they were exceptionally uh, awesome. And I really enjoyed uh, these sessions because of the presence you guys uh, made. This session was not a one-way session. All of these sessions were not one-way session. Courtesy Ravi, courtesy Tommy, all of you guys, Evelyn, Fawad, uh, Jawad, everybody was uh, participating in the questions. They were asking the questions. They were telling me the topics to cover. So uh, this was an overall very uh, nice session to conclude. And I really enjoyed uh, teaching you guys in this session. And uh, I hope that you guys have learned uh, potentially uh, good points uh, to score in the examination now a quick uh, uh, reminder of some things that you have to remember number one is you don't rush into the answer you pleasure is all mine i'm i am humble literally i am humbled since all of you guys have been uh, you you have been repeat you have been repeatedly joined the sessions nobody has skipped among uh, okay please speak my number my number is double zero nine two three four five double zero nine two three four five eight five zero three eight zero four I hope it is clear now I will be quickly summing up the exam uh, focus points number one is go through the opening paragraph number two is go through the requirements number three first figure out the things that should be used in the exam in the question attempting and you have to go through the things that are not going to be used in the exam so do not engage yourself in anything that is not specifically being asked for you have to be very much specific to all those things that the examiner is asking you will only get the mask of the things that the examiner has asked you to do anything done by your side any other calculation any other explanation it is not going to yield you a single mark secondly when you are doing a computer-based examination there is a chance that you write a sentence you simply backspace it and you don't realize that the time spent in typing and the time spent in deleting that is actually being wasted. We do it in the normal conventional style on the paper. We write it when we cut it. We see that we have wasted time on that. But on the examiner, uh, but, the, but on the exam done on the computer, we do not realize since we simply backspace it. Please consider it. Do not waste your time in writing one or two or three words then backspacing them and then rewriting it at uh, rewriting it from the beginning first construct the whole sentence in your mind then you write it you are no more a tax junior or a tax helper you are a tax manager or a tax senior on whose advice big decisions big financial decisions are going to be taken so you should be very much clear about what you are writing the communication should be effective whatever meaning you want to give to that conversation should be concluded in that effective manner for the person seeking for your advice the advice should not be wavered it should be clear in respect of the question that is being asked secondly while practicing for the paper you should know what pattern are you going to follow in the exam practice the papers for that three hours and 15 minutes for at least two times so that the time management thing and that uh, friendship with the computer based pattern is developed and this is not your first time sitting on the paper and doing that experiment in the paper where you are already 
left with nothing to lose again the choice of questions is also very important you should not attempt the question that you feel you are too good with for example if you think that trading losses oh yes it is my cup of tea and you start doing it and you start doing it handsomely and wasting a lot of time on that this is not appropriate for me right you have to attempt those questions that are going to yield you more marks not those on which you are going to spend extra time so select the questions on priority that pretty straightforward and that can be answered easily shortly and comprehensively and then last but not the least the meaning of the communication should be communicated to the end user the end user should not be guessing what has been written if the workings are done they should be correctly referenced the examiner does not have enough time to go through the whole excel sheet and to find the notes you have written they want some clear guidelines from you so that they could simply go what you have done see and they said bingo the uh, the uh, the candidate is well equipped last point i am going to make and then i'll be concluding the session please do not underestimate tx examination content tx technical content the course content of f6 is equally important as the course content of atx you cannot pass the exam simply on the knowledge acquired in p6 examination p6 course content you have to be very 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 much clear about the concepts of tax f6 that can be your trump card in the examination that's it from my side i hope that uh, this session this webinar conducted by acca and uh, is going to help you uh, go through your exam i wish you very best of luck and i am very thankful to acca for arranging this meeting for the students throughout the globe and giving me opportunity as a presenter to conclude and uh, i am humbled i am humbled i am humbled my sincere and uh, deepest prayers for you guys that you excel you exceed in the examination and uh, being a professional you uh, hold uh, you uphold the best standards as we are instructed through our acca further one last tip do not let go of the professional and ethics marks they are the easiest marks around 6 to 8 available in the examination if you capitalize on them your fight is for only 42 marks to do so do not lose those marks value added tax should not at all be taken light it is coming in different sections either in income tax either with corporation tax or either with iht cgt you have to be very much clear about the value added tax thank you very much guys if there is any question i am available through email and my whatsapp number is with you it was pleasure teaching you and it was pleasure teaching you on behalf of acca global and scan school of accountancy this is your presenter instructor for p6 examination shujauddin malik signing off from this presentation thank you very much and wish you very best of luck for the examination may god be with you